So hopefully in this video, you'll be learning how to buy Bitcoin because truth be told, if you're looking to buy Bitcoin at the beginning, it's quite complicated for the most part, right? It can be, yeah. It certainly can be. You hear some convoluted stories about, wait a second, someone got raw for Bitcoin. What is this? Where do I buy it? And you're like, you have this hesitation. So hopefully Ethan and I, well, today we'll be educating you on what we believe are the safest but also easiest, well, those kind of contradictory sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, but safest and easiest way to purchase, say, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now, before we begin, I want Ethan to introduce himself. Right. So, yeah, my name is Ethan. I've been in the space since 2012. Um, I really wish I had caught some of the early investment advice when it was like 25 cents per Bitcoin to pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all wish we were there, but yeah, so I've, I've been in the space for a long time. I uh, used to do a radio show. I think actually our radio show that I was involved in it was the first live to air uh, commercial uh, radio broadcast Amazing. that was became Bitcoin related. It was fantastic. It was a lot of fun. But yeah, there's been so much development in this space. And as the space develops and as people get more mm. interested in it, you get more people who want to want to buy it because they want to find out of it. In fact, friends of mine, they go back uh, to visit friends and family and they tell them what they've heard from me. And then yeah. they, get, they, t they come back and tell me, my friends and family, they all want to know about this Bitcoin stuff and how do you buy it? How do you get your hands on it? What, yeah. What's going on in the space? So yeah, lots of interest and people mm. who are new to it, they, they got to figure out how it is they get into it, right? So what do you think right now is one of the simplest ways for somebody who's, we'll just focus for Bitcoin for now, sure. right? What do you think is one of the simplest and safest ways for, let's say, a mom and pa to buy Bitcoin? I, you know, there are so many ways, as you mentioned earlier, and sometimes simple and safe doesn't go together. Yeah. Um, but I think that if, if you look at, at a market like localbitcoins.com, for instance, that's, that's a popular market where people will trade uh, cash for Bitcoin. There are, there are scams on there, though, yes, for instance, is, yeah. right? So, so it's you, like the Kijiji for Bitcoin. That's right, exactly. Totally like the Kijiji for Bitcoin. And you have to, you have to just like when you're buying a bicycle off of Kijiji that might be stolen or sure. something, right? You, you, you really have to kind of keep in your mind that, you know, you're, you're dealing with strangers. You have to look at ratings and past reviews yeah. of people. That's something that local Bitcoin actually incorporates into its system, which makes for a safer system is, is you, you totally can, if you want to, uh, buy Bitcoin from the brand new user account who's got, you know, Smith123 <laughs> as its username. And, and, and it might work out, yeah. but chances are that might be pretty darn risky. Or you can you can approach these merchants that have been on local Bitcoin for five years. Uh, you know, where they're there, they were there when it started. Mm. They've got, you know, a thousand uh, uh, bits of feedback and review. You look for that. You look for those people who will be able to trade Bitcoin for you. And, and really, it's about as simple as install a wallet on your phone, right? Mm -hmm. And you get, uh, you, you, you And when you mean by wallet, this. you're talking about it, you know, let's kind of like yeah. dive in deep for a wallet. Sure. So what's the simplest explanation you can give somebody, what is a wallet? A wallet is a place where your Bitcoin addresses live and your Bitcoin addresses are where your Bitcoin live. Okay. Right? I. Even so let's say let's say a, wa a wallet is a digital version of your actual physical wallet you have in your pocket. Yeah. A little bit different, obviously. Yeah. We won't get into technicalities of it. And I would I always tell people it's almost like the same thing as if you want to use online banking. So opposed of you logging in, like for example, online banking. Let's say your TD, you got to log in, give your password, yada yada yada. Think of that, but without all the hassle and without actually, without TD owning your wallet. You own it, it's yours on your phone. You have access, you don't have to worry about passwords because it's it's encrypted in a different manner. But that's what it is. It's, it's a digital platform on your phone or on a desktop or on other devices, which you have access towards a crypto that you buy. Right, exactly. So you, you get something like this on your phone. Yes. And it's as simple as showing your your address your public address to yeah. somebody else so you basically you kind of open up your wallet for yeah. somebody else like here yeah. <laughs> give, me, give me money stuff cash in there that's right that's uh, right and, and that's it's pretty much that simple right mm. they'll send the people who you're buying from uh, if you meet them in person mm -hmm. they'll they'll send money they're, they'll send bitcoin to your wallet you'll give them physical cash that you're yeah. more familiar with right and at that point, it's a simple exchange. That's it. Trade so what do you say local Bitcoins is a good start for some people? I would say it is. Okay. Yeah. I would say it's a good start because it's typically, it's pretty straightforward. It doesn't take a lot to set up an account on local okay. Bitcoins. It, it's pretty straightforward. So let's kind of summarize. Uh, so before you get to local Bitcoin, you need to get yourself a Bitcoin wallet. That's right. Do you recommend any wallets? 
Oh, I mean, there's so many there's good so many, wallets yeah. out there. I mean, I, my favorite is the Jax wallet. I Jax is a good Jax multi-currency, yeah. 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 It's, it's a good multi-currency wallet. I think if you're looking for something a little bit more basic, you'd probably go with the blockchain.info wallet. Yeah. Or Bread. Or Bread wallet. That's, that's <laughs> Worst it. name ever. <laughs> bread but, but good wallet, right? Good wallet. Great so, wallet, yeah. I mean, there, there are a lot of good uh, wallets out there. Definitely when you're looking for wallets, yeah. you, you do want to go to reputable sources. Like, for instance, sure. I know on blockheats.com, we have... We have some wallet information there. Right? Yeah, we have a guide. I'll make sure yeah. I link it below this video. So uh, you know, go to reputable sources to look for uh, wallets that you might want to start to use. Mm. Because if you just search out any wallet software, you know, again, this is a space where you 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 do need to be aware of yes. the potential for getting ripped off on scams. That's right. It's, it's a possibility. So if we summarize, get yourself the wallet that we don't have a preference per se. Like I said, we have a guide for the best wallets that we think for Block Geeks. There's a link below. But get yourself a wallet. You can go to local Bitcoins, register yourself like any other website, and then pretty much find people with great ratings who've been there for a while. No different than if you and I go for like TripAdvisor and we're like, hey, ratings for this uh, right. resort. Garbage. All right, I'm not doing business <laughs> with them. Or five five stars out of five, great, I'm going over there. So no difference in that. You meet up and they, when you meet up, they first give you the Bitcoin. It dep depends on the person, I it guess. It depends on the person because, I mean, they, they, you have to understand that, especially when you're new and yes. you're on this website, you are essentially the unknown character. Unknown person, right? yes. So, uh, as long as you're dealing people uh, with people who have a very good history, you might expect some of them to say, "Look, well, I, I will want you to give me money first, and then I'll give you the Bitcoin." Because yeah. for them, it's it's a it's a security issue where if you get Bitcoin from them, yeah, there's no way for them to get it back. Sure. So if you just run off. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, so that's a risk for them too. That's risk right. is shared on this platform. Yes. There, there's there's a lot of different angles to this, but yeah, uh, it's very simple. Just sign up. You you there's a chat interface, mm -hmm. so you can talk to this person before you meet them, mm -hmm. um, and and you'll essentially hammer out the the uh, the terms of your of your trade. So fantastic. Hour. That's local Bitcoin is number one. What do you say is a secondary option? Well, actually, there's a there is an option. We were talking about this off camera. But there's an option right here in Canada. Mm. It's Quick BT, right? Yes, the Interact. Yeah, yeah, and that is very simple. And it, it, that you're, you're you're pretty much eliminating any of the risk that we talked about with local yeah. Bitcoin, right? So uh, you go to QuickBT.com. Uh, you can buy limited amounts of Bitcoin with uh, Interact. Yeah. So it's super simple. Super it's it's fast, secure. QuickBT.com. Put your Interact in it. I do want to state this caveat though. It's not an Interact Visa. It has right. to be a traditional Interact, the old school Interact, yeah. not, not Interact Visa. Type in your Interact. It's going to say, hey, you know, do you accept these payments? Yes, I do. I believe the limit's 200 bucks a day for Interact. Yeah. Uh, but it's pretty simple, quick and secure like this. There, There is actually, uh, I, I know uh, a couple of years ago yeah. or a year ago when I was using it a little bit more regularly, mm. um, there is a tier where you can get into like an invite. Yes, there is. Yeah. Yes, so there you is. can actually start to, uh, you can, Once you, can you have more. more trust. Yeah. yeah. And again, that's the trust thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's really important to, to make note that the reason that that trust thing is there is because Bitcoin transactions are irreversible. Yes, they are. Once Bitcoin are sent, that's yeah. it. <laughs> it's, Refund, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that I mean, whenever you're buying Bitcoin, yeah. you have to think of that as one of the transaction dynamics that exists. Is when you get Bitcoin, it's all yours, and nobody can take it back from mm -hmm. you. So that is that is a level of risk. So yeah, but that is a really simple way. Okay. QuickBT.com. I love that that website. Yeah, I love it. Great. So let's go to number three. Let's start talking about exchanges. Sure. I, before exchanges, yeah. do you want to talk about uh, BTMs? Because that's another really uh, simple way. Yeah. Yeah, we can talk about them. Sure. Just yeah. really quickly. Yeah. I, I mean, if you if you do if you do find a Bitcoin ATM machine yep. in your neighborhood, those are pretty simple too. And usually, all you need is a phone number. Yes. So it, the BTM will text you a confirmation code. There's. Well, we mean BTM. Or we're talking a little bit about Bitcoin ATM. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like an ATM for Bitcoin. Yeah. So, uh, but but it, it, those are pretty simple because really you just plug cash into the machine. Yes. Right? So uh, and and. It, so a lot of uh, Bitcoin ATMs or BTMs, they, they can actually uh, give you cash as well if mm -hmm. you send them. Yeah, you can buy and sell. Yeah, so, yeah, they're, they're, they go both ways. So it's really simple, just because it's just a machine you walk up yes. to. It's like a vending machine. Yeah. Right. So really easy. If you do find a Bitcoin ATM in your local neighborhood, I think it's it's worth checking out. I do want to state though, some of them do have high fees though. That's true. Yeah, so it's like ten percent. <laughs> so yeah, some some of them are some of them are, are high, high, some of them are low. So 
I do suggest that you figure out what's the transaction fee that you're paying. Right, and it's not a bad idea to contact the operator if you can find out the information who, who runs it. Yeah. Not a bad idea to contact them directly by email or something and just kind of, yeah, how, how much do you charge? Because I have seen DTMs that actually charge a 0% fee. That's good, Simon. Yeah, very rare, <laughs> <laughs> but I have seen it. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, when it, when it comes to exchanges, you know, it, it's, it's, worth, it's worth mentioning that it, it can be very difficult yes. uh, in comparison to all of the options we've talked about already. Right? Yeah, so we've gone from barrier entry from zero yeah. and incrementally getting harder. Sure. So local Bitcoin's pretty zero, uh, and we'll explain to you in a second why. And then we went to QuickBT, it's pretty zero, uh, just your interact call card, and then uh, BTM, where you physically have to go there. Sure. So now we're getting to exchanges, which you have to go through a process a waiting period, approval period, a KYC period, uh, system, yeah. and um, based on exchanges, and this is really determined on where you live. So we may we might make uh, suggestions for certain exchanges that you may not have access to. Right. So basically, what we're talking about right now as Canadians would we'll be speaking about what we have access to as Canadians. Yeah. Eh? So, yeah, <laughs> egg. totally, eh? <laughs> Do you see that moose over there, eh? Ah, uh, shut up, you hose. <laughs> <laughs> There's, so exchanges in Canada, uh, like exchanges in most any other country, they have to they have to operate under AML and KYC yeah. laws, which is anti money laundering and know your customer laws. Right? These are regulations that prevent financial fraud mm. in in the banking system, or at least try to prevent they it. They try to, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, when you're setting up an exchange account, have you ever opened a brokerage account for trading stocks, that kind of thing? No, right? I haven't. No. So I so I have I've done that. And that's a complicated process. Yes. You have to provide identification. You have to give them mm -hmm. all of your, your personal information. Um, setting up a Bitcoin exchange account is slightly less complicated than that. So if you've ever opened up a brokerage account online for a discount brokerage firm, yeah. then opening up a Bitcoin exchange account would be a little bit less onerous than that, yeah. right? Uh, but yeah, that is everything you mentioned. It's, it's you have to you have to be able to provide personal documentation, so uh, photo ID. Uh, you have to provide things like uh, utility bills to prove your address. Mm -hmm. You have to prove who you are, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you, if you if you want to withdraw uh, Canadian dollars from the exchange, yeah. you have to send them a check and a, a, a debit. Uh, what do you call those things? The automatic withdrawal forms. Oh, a direct a, deposit. Yeah, direct deposit form. Yeah. Right, exactly. So you have to provide things like that. When you're opening up an exchange account, that's what you have to keep in mind is you're going to have to provide a lot of information about who you are. Yeah. Because you are opening up a regulated account in a regulated sort of uh, industry. Because basically what you're doing is you're connecting your bank account to the bank account that represents the exchange. So based on that, you have to go through the processes of making sure that you're not money laundering. Right. So they're going to ask you for verification, whether it's birth certificate, driver's license, or passport. They'll ask you for a utility bill to prove that you're well, you're living somewhere. Yeah. Uh, you're going to have to scan all these documents up to their platform. It's going to take them sometimes two days, sometimes a week. I've heard sometimes two weeks, depending on. Don't don't even be surprised yeah. if, if if this lasts. I it, when 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 Bitcoin especially gets overheated and lots of people get interested yeah. in it, exchanges suffer massive amounts of traffic. Those backlogs I've seen as as long as a month. Wow. Not typical, right? But I've seen it get that bad. Mm. Um, so, I mean, that's something you want to keep in mind too, is there is a review period, just like you said. And also, don't be surprised if exchanges ask you even for a picture of you holding your identification. For Kraken, I had. <laughs> Kraken's like yeah. that. Uh, actually, that's the only one I'm aware of. Just for Coin Square does that. Coin Square too, yeah. Coin Square, yeah. actually, that... CoinSquare is my favorite exchange, by yeah. the way. I love okay. it. CoinSquare.io. Nice. Free plug, guys. Should see some ether in my account. Address no. <laughs> <laughs> below. So, but like it, it, it's, you have to be aware that all of this information is going to be requested of you, and the reason for that is because of all of the regulation. Mm. You are proving who you are. You are proving that you you are not a, a, a ghost. That's right. So once you're on there, it's pretty easy from there. Sure. So once you're on there, it's pretty simple. Uh, they'll have various different deposit methods, so you can maybe uh, direct deposit cash. Uh, yeah. You can wire them money, wire transfers, right? Yeah. Uh, you can send email money transfers. Interact with someone. Uh, some exchanges use uh, something called FlexPin, mm. which is you just go to a corner store, you buy this little FlexPin yeah. card, enter a code, and it's instantly in it's your account, yeah. right? So there are a lot of different funding options. Some of these options typically come with a cost. For instance, you might you might find that if you're wiring money to an exchange, 
it will cost you money at your bank to wire, yep. and then it will cost you money to even have it deposited yep. in their exchange yeah. because the exchange on the other end, their bank charges them to receive the that's wire. That's right, that's right, and double charge. Yeah, so you, you, all of these exchanges should lay out pretty clearly yeah. the charges that they'll associate with your deposit options, yeah. but that's something to keep in mind. So with. you mentioned one already. Uh, maybe give us another one that you kind of recommend. Uh, Quadriga CX. Uh, yeah, Quadriga, yeah. They are, yeah. they are currently the largest exchange in Canada yeah. for crypto. Um, uh, they're, they're definitely a popular exchange. They're not my favorite, but they are a popular exchange. Mm -hmm. They do have a, a lot of uh, funding options, so mm -hmm. a solid option, I guess. Mm -hmm. They've got a good reputation. Why do you like Coin as opposed to Kraken? Uh, well, you mean Coin Square? Yeah. So the reason I like Coin Square is per partially because it's right here where I live in the Greater Toronto area. I kind of like that there's a local company local, here. Yeah. Um, the person who runs it is very much into trying to advance crypto and trying to get people mm -hmm. involved, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just a solid exchange. I mean, mm -hmm. here's the thing: if you have an exchange run by a mathematician, yeah, <laughs> this is a guy who's who is absolutely focused on trying to make sure that this exchange is solid and usable. I really enjoy it, but uh, it's just got adequate liquidity. It's yeah. just a good exchange, good solid exchange. But all the other ones are really not bad. Even mm -hmm. there's a new one in Canada that's just starting up. Uh, easy, I think it's easybtc.ca or .com. Okay. Um, EZ BTC and and they're a neat exchange. They've got a lot of different deposit options, but very new, so the liquidity is very low. Mm. And if you're buying Bitcoin on an exchange, you really want to go where the liquidity yeah. is because you're going to get the best market price. So let's recap everything. Number one, from the beginning, we got local Bitcoins. Mm. Number two, we got is Quick BT, Quick BT for yeah. Interact. Number three is Bitcoin ATMs, and finally, number four is the exchanges. Right. So there you have it. That's our summary of how to buy Bitcoin. And what we mean by how to buy Bitcoin, this is also applicable to many other currencies as well. True. You have Ethereum as well, at least the big ones, the ones with market caps of at least more than $100 million, right? right. Uh, what I recommend for you is don't just take our word for granted, do your own research, look up other people. Like I said, it really does matter where you live, what country you're in, uh, geopolitics of your area as well. But for the most part, this is mainly applicable for most people. My suggestion, like always educate yourself first. Don't just, don't just accept information as is. Understand the concepts as opposed to just knowing the concepts. So any last questions? Just be aware, there's a slight learning curve yeah. and it's okay. It's okay. Everybody I've spoken to yeah. has had some difficulty easing into the space of course. because it's new. So don't be intimidated by learning curve. It's awesome. just going to be there. For Beautiful. You. Well, thank you, Ethan. Thanks a bunch.